2002, I lived in a thousand square foot home with my now ex-wife and two teenage kids. I worked at a real tail store chain called Sport Mart as the, as the IT guy. I was the help desk. The chain had 60 stores across Canada at the time and I did telephone support as well as after hours support. I was also involved in planning upgrades to existing equipment. My boss mostly managed inventory database and spreadsheets concerning the financials like end-of-day sales reports and whatnot. The office did not have a single brand of PC such as HP or Dell as it was all over the map. Some machines were custom-built units while others were off-the-shelf big box store machines. Only the district managers and the IT team had laptops and there was one floating around the office for a loaner if a staff member was traveling and needed a machine to keep in touch with the office. This was the time before cell phones were used to read emails and to get on the internet you had to use dial-up. But high speed internet was just around the corner. I had high speed internet at home before my boss did, as I lived in a small community just outside the city and they used our area as the test bed for the service. There was a pallet in the back part of the office that had all the dead PC equipment and it was my job to go through the parts and make sure the hard drives were wiped before the equipment went to the PC scrapyard. We did not really mess around with fixing PCs, we just replaced them. I was able to take all of the good bits home and combine bits and pieces to build my own machines. We had a graphics design department and they would do all the artwork for the advertising in our office. And they always had the best of the best computers. Like leading edge processors, maxed out RAM, dual video cards or high end video cards with two heads for dual 19 or 20 inch monitors when everyone else was using cheaper 14 inch CRT monitors. I loved ordering the parts for the PC build for the art department as I could order then get my hands on the latest hardware of the time. This was the era when 46 CPUs were being replaced by the Pentium also known as P5 and the Pentium 2 processors. It was a very confusing and fast changing time for PC hardware. When I started the job, I had a couple of home PCs with different architecture designs. I had a Pentium Pro 946SX and 946DX with MMX. Before I was working at Sportmart, I had a small business fixing PCs for other small businesses and I would collect their old hardware as partial payment after I upgraded them. Most of the small businesses had old, outdated equipment but once in a while I could pick up a gem. Case modding was not really a thing back then but I ended up with an Asus motherboard that I could overclock so I wanted to push it a bit and that meant more cooling and since I had access to extra fans and other bits and bobs I started collecting parts for my project. The project was before digital cameras were common so I don't have any video just still photos. First I found a case from the scrap pile at work. This was pretty standard case, quite common around the office. I gutted it and cleaned it out really well. Then I took it to my friend's place that does metal work and had him cut a hole in the top and on the side of the case for me. We used a CD for the hole on the top of the case as a template and he used nippers to cut the metal. For the side panel, he used a hole saw. After he was done, we blasted it with compressed air really well to get rid of all the little metal bits from inside the case, and then we washed it and let it dry for a, a day or two. I had picked up a few micro switches and the red green LEDs. Then I made a front panel. It's hard to see, but where the LEDs are is smoke transparent plastic. So when the machine was off, you could not see the LEDs. The little switches were kind of hard to find as there was no Amazon or eBay at the time. I had to talk to the guy that had an electronic repair shop for the parts I needed. 
Back then, motherboards did not have the multiple fan handlers like they do now. Most fans were connected with Molex connectors and ran when the PC was turned on. I wanted to switch the fans as they were quite loud when all of them were spinning at the same time. On the switch panel, up is on and the LED would be green and red was off. I understand the electrical theory, but I'm not formally trained in electronics. You tell me in the comments how I could make the LEDs light when the power to the switch was off. I believe I found the schematic from a magazine to get the fans to work. Probably PC computing. I had a subscription to PC, to the PC magazine and every month I would get updates on the latest and greatest hardware. I was also a member of a book club and regularly would get Q computer books sent in the mail. Many times the book had a CD with it, so it was made it easy to find topics. I had quite the collection of computer books. As you can see, I was managing cables before cable management was really a thing. This case was much different than most the, with the optional four fans. This is one of the first case mods I've done over the years, and I really like doing it. That fan on top of was quite chunky and moved a lot of air and it sounded like a jet taking off. I still do add more fans to my PCs, but these days of RGB LEDs and the wide selection of fans with fan control software, it's much easier to control fans and make it look good. Have you ever modded a PC case? Put your answer in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Well, thanks for watching. Until next time, BRB Tech Talk out.